There are two main uses of the word objective in ordinary life. One of them is as a word of praise for certain people. And the usual contrast here is between objective and partial or biased. For example, we might say that a football referee um, was not objective because he was biased against my team. Or we might say that a teacher uh, is or should be objective in her grades, in the sense that she should be impartial between all her students. A referee or a teacher who is not objective um, is not a good teacher or a good referee. But the word objective is also used to describe or classify certain questions, subject matters or disciplines. For example, mathematics is often thought to be the perfect example of an objective discipline. And the question, what is Donald Trump's weight, is normally regarded as an objective question. If the scales work fine, you get a straight answer, no matter how much Trump or others may complain. The usual contrast here is between objective and subjective. For example, many regard the subjective a question like, is spicy food tasty? The idea here is that some people like spicy food, some people don't. And so it makes no sense to argue with each other over whether spicy food is tasty or not. But note here that we have just come across what is plausibly an objective statement. That some people like spicy food is an objective psychological fact. There is a truth of the matter, for example, um, whether your neighbor likes spicy food or not. Um, of course, they might change their taste over time, but it will still be true that, for example, when they were three years old, they didn't like spicy food, and then now they do. And it might also be true that they do not like or dislike spicy food. Maybe spicy food just leaves them indifferent, like uh, the seaweed in sushi rolls, at least for me. This example shows that objectivity doesn't belong only to the hard sciences. In general, as long as you're ready to speak of facts and truth and of some people getting it right and some people getting it wrong, then we're probably dealing with something objective. What about subjective then? Here there are at least two ideas associated with subjective. One is that what is subjective has nothing to do with truth or facts. The other idea is that what is subjective has to do with inventing truth or constructing truth as opposed to discovering truth. In this sense, there can be something like subjective truth. For example, people often say things like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What this could mean is that there are standards of beauty, that there are facts about what is beautiful and what is not, but these are invented or constructed by us. But who is us? Here another concept comes into the picture. Relativity. For example, whether Estonia has a beautiful landscape might be true relative to standards accepted by Estonians, but false relative to standards accepted by other people. Now it's clear that in this case we don't get an objective truth. And it's also clear that it doesn't make much sense to disagree with one another over whether the Estonian landscape is beautiful. But we may suppose that something is invented or constructed, and yet not relative to anyone's standpoint. Here we come full circle back to the referee and the teacher. The rules of a sport, as well as the criteria for grading, surely are not discovered in nature, but are made up by people. And yet, it still seems rather a factual matter whether a player committed foul um, or whether a student deserves high grades. Any given referee or teacher can get it wrong on any given occasion, and it makes sense to hope that they get it right. And if that's true, then perhaps the real contrast is not between discovering truth and inventing truth. It seems more likely that there are different kinds and degrees of objectivity for different kinds of questions and disciplines. For example, what is objective in the context of mathematics might not be the same thing as what is objective in a legal context or in art criticism. Still, as long as we are willing to speak of a true or a false statement of a correct or incorrect decision, and not just relative to someone's standpoint, then we are dealing with something objective.